Hello, and welcome back to our study of Hanina Halacha, the teachings of Rabbi Yazam Alameid Shlita. We are already midweek, and we're continuing our discussion about the laws and customs of Kiddush. The next chapter, Minhagei HaKiddush V'Kisu HaChala, customs of Kiddush and the covering of the Chala. Hamenig Revech L'Amod Be'es HaKiddush Shabbos, Shabbos, B'Pnei Sh'yesh Bo Eidr Shal B'Riyas Olam. So just to begin, you'll find that probably very few people that you know do Kiddush the same way. Some people sit, some people stand, some people do both. So Ramalamad begins in saying that the widespread custom is that people should stand for Kiddush because there is testimony on the creation of the world. And witnesses, when giving testimony, are required to stand. And the Arizal holds this way as well, based on Kabbalistic reasons. And this is also the custom in Sfarad and certain Hasidic communities as well. The custom of Ashkenaz, as brought down in the Ramah and Shulchan Aruch, is to sit for Kiddush. So that Kiddush, because we have this principle in the Gemara that says Kiddush has to be Makam Seuda, Kiddush has to be where the meal is eaten. And if it's part of the meal, if it's established as part of the meal, and a meal is done while sitting down. In addition to this, there's a difference of having people standing around, but if everyone is sitting down together, then those who are listening to Kiddush are considered established as one group, and therefore one person saying it on behalf of the others is more of a cohesive unit. And he quotes again, brought from the Mishnah Bura, a custom that in Ashkenaz, some people stand for the first part of Kiddush when they say Vayichulu, which might be the testimony part, and then they sit for the bulk of the Kiddush, the bracha part. When it comes to making Kiddush in the daytime, Shabbos morning, everybody agrees it's better to sit. There's no testimony aspect. And this is the custom amongst most Jews. Even though some people do stand, and there certainly is no prohibition. Even though a woman can indeed make Kiddush for a man, the custom is, is that the man makes Kiddush for the household. And when there are many families together, or many people together, the best, the ideal is to have one person make Kiddush for everyone, because we follow the principle found in the Gemara of Barov Hadras Melech, that more people doing one mitzvah at one time together is considered greater honor to the king. So even though I always offer, let's say, Friday night, and we have guests, people want to make their own Kiddush, I prefer to have one Kiddush recited again because of this principle of Barov Hadras Melech. Nogin l'chasos hasechalos b'shas Kiddush. So the widespread custom, of course, is also to cover the challah at the time of Kiddush. B'nei sh'yesh b'yadeinu klal. She'bechol eish sh'yesh l'fenenu lechem v'yayin v'onu rotsum lechol mishnehem t'srichem l'hakdim l'varech al halechem she'hu chashuv mehayayin. Now, there is a principle in blessings that whenever we have in front of us bread or wine, and you want to have both of them, so the more important food should go first. And bread is always considered more important than wine. However, Kiddush has to come before the challah. And so that we shouldn't violate this principle, this rule of having the challah first, which should be done halachically. So by covering it, therefore, we will be able to have the wine first. And if you have mezonos, also cookies or cake or something like that, you should also cover it during Kiddush. Because those also come before wine. When you have a communal Kiddush, and this is a little bit more challenging, 
But certainly when one person is making kiddush, which is usually me and Shul, if there's mazonas in front of you, cookies, we try to cover them. And especially if you're going to have in mind to be yotze with that kiddush. But someone who's not having any intention to drink from the wine after Kiddush, does not have to cover the mizonos or the cookies or cake that is in front of him. According to this, you don't have to have the chal already on the table if you're not planning to drink from the wine. But if they are on the table already, then one should cover them. Another reason is given for covering the chalos. As we actually just read recently in Parshas B'Shalach, we'll see other places in the Chumash, that when the Jewish people were in the desert after Yitzhak Mitzrayim, they received the portion of the man every single day. And when it came time Friday, before Shabbos, they received a double portion of the man. And that's why we have Lechem Mishnah, we have two chalas representing the dub- double portion of the man. The haman haya mechusa milamala ulamilata batal. And the man itself was covered both on the bottom and on the top with a sort of dew. Therefore, on our, our tables, our Shabbos tables, the man representative, which is the two chalas, are covered on the bottom with the tablecloth on the bottom or the plate, and also a challah cover on top of it. According to this, we definitely should have the challahs on the table at the time of Kiddush because we want to commemorate the man. Some have the custom of keeping the challahs covered until the end of Hamotzi. Some people also have the cover, custom of covering the challah, the two challahs, even at Shal Shudas, where there is no Kiddush until the end of the Baruch HaMotzi. Again, different customs of this. There are some that say also, the Rav doesn't write it here, but I'm just adding in that there are some that have the custom that when making Hamotzi, that we specifically do not cover them because when you make a Baruch on something, you should see, you should have it open to everyone to see what it is that you're making a Baruch on. Of course, the first reason that's given about the order of blessings and then we cover the challah so that we can make the blessing on wine first so it wouldn't be violating the order of operations. Of course, we have the famous medrash or famous drash that all of our children know is that we don't want the challahs to feel bad. Therefore, we cover them because the challahs are saying, why aren't you cutting me first? But that's really an expression of this devar halacha that we have an order of operations when it comes to brachos, so therefore, sometimes if we cover it, then it will not be in violation, so they use the language of not feeling bad, but I'm fairly certain that chalas don't have feelings, because if they did, then we wouldn't be cutting them so quickly, but I digress. In any event, this is what we're doing on a regular basis. We make kiddush with chalas covered in front of us, and this is the custom of Israel, and whether you sit or stand or do both for Kiddush. One of those great things because whatever you do is right. You should follow the custom of your household, of your parents, of your grandparents. And we should all be so to make Kiddush together. Thank you again for listening. I hope you have a great day. We'll see you next time as we study the teachings of Rabbi Yazim Alameid Shlita.